So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name's uh, James Harrop. I'm an SE in the, uh, the UK and I uh, Enterprise Networking team. Thanks for your attendance today. You know, before, as I kind of started to put this, um, this presentation together and um, sort of think about the digital network architecture, um, I had to kind of just, well, do my homework and kind of settle things in my own head. And, and I sort of asked myself the question, well, what's digital? Um, so obviously we had the, you know, the, the digital watch has been around for a while. And, um, and I think that the, the word digital is, um, is kind of like the, the cloud word that's kind of been around for a while. And it's kind of not really matured until recent years. The kind of the words and descriptions that kind of come up in my mind when sort of looking at digital is things around technology. Digital is technology. Digital is solutions, technology solutions, problems. It's, it's about new ways of doing business. Um, it's about using technology for better ways of doing business. Um, and it's also about um, engaging with our customers, our end customers, in a better way. And also, um, it's sort of also about the, um, the analytics. So there's a ton of data out there and there are these golden nuggets, and it's kind of the, we don't know what we don't know, and it's kind of taking that data and finding those sort of little golden nuggets and sort of producing a better way to interact with our customers, um, and also um, a better way to kind of move our IT along in a much more innovative way, and, um, and sort of speed up innovation and speed up technology. Uh, so I think digital really, from Cisco perspective, comes in a number of ways. So it comes in in terms of a set of solutions that we have. I think digital uh, enablement comes in as part of the architecture and the DNA architecture. That's something that we're going to go through today. I just wanted to kind of give a, a, a couple of examples, a couple of UK-based examples. These are all kind of um, publicly available, so you'll be able to get these white papers if you can't, kind of care to look at them. Um, you know, Glasgow City Council with a Smouser Cities project, um, you know, example of um, an energy management solution from Cisco. Um, essentially, uh, Glasgow Council through the schools were able to save um, about £330,000 in the first, first year of having the solution. So the return on the investment of the solution was uh, gained within the first five months. Um, and then, they were, as I say, they were getting these savings of 330000 a year just by performing energy management based on the capabilities available in the hardware and the software. So not particularly rocket science, but an example of something that's available, kind of almost like a quick win with customers, something that kind of really has, uh, has been quite effective. The other one that's um, quite close to my heart is uh, as an example um, of a, a solution, almost like a pre-packaged solution from Cisco, a digital solution is, uh, is nationwide. And uh, in Nationwide, that was essentially a video conferencing solution. And um, that was a Remote Expert. Um, you may, may already know about Remote Expert. But essentially, the, um, the building society was looking at a better way to engage with customers. Um, they were losing business in remote offices. So basically, mortgage advisors, they were looking to kind of, their, their key thing is to be selling mortgages. And what they were finding was that during the um, you know, during the week uh, at the remote locations, the customer would be in on a Tuesday looking to kind of get details and potentially arrange mortgages and the mortgage advisor wasn't going to be there until Thursday because he was kind of doing the rounds amongst the, the remote locations. So they were struggling with, um, you know, customer service, um, customer retention and also, you know, literally, uh, you know, losing sales to competition. So um, the, the solution of remote advisor um, having um, advisors in a central location, so like central call centers, uh, and being able to basically provide um, someone to discuss mortgages um, through all the opening hours of the bank. Um, and, and basically they started with nine sites as a proof of concept. They moved, stepped that up to about 40 sites and, uh, and they saw the real benefits there. So customer satisfaction increased, uh, mortgage sales increased, um, and, um, and, and basically that was the vehicle to which um, they, they saw the fruits and, and basically rolled it out to another 400 sites. So really kind of going from sort of 50 sites straight up to 400. So uh, really pleased um, you know, with that solution. Just these are publicly available references. You guys can use them with, with your customers for sure. 
and um, and really to kind of demonstrate that you know there are um, there are solutions available, there are features available um, in the Cisco architecture, which kind of facilitate um, almost like a prepackaged solution. I guess kind of when we're all starting off with our designs or with our conversations with customers, we kind of start off with what are the requirements? What are you looking to do? We believe that the, the requirements within the, that the DNA architecture is looking to address are these three key areas. So we're looking to innovate faster. So we're not necessarily looking to sell a package technology solution. It might just be that we're looking to provide a more automated way of providing existing IT. We're looking to reduce cost and complexity. You know, on average, the operational expenditure for a solution is two to three times the amount of the capex. So we're looking to kind of reduce that for our customers through automated tools, things like controllers, and also have open APIs so customers can kind of develop ways of interacting with the network in a much more automated way. Essentially, very importantly for our customers, we're looking to lower the risk. You probably all know about the network as a sensor, network as an enforcer type solutions that we've got, a lot of power in the network in terms of you know, things like NetFlow, security analytics that we can perform with StealthWatch to actually monitor unusual activity on the network. Two key areas there to kind of mitigate risk. One is segmentation throughout the network. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And also the ability to find threats, that a threat that wasn't necessarily a signature on an IPS at the edge of the network. So some unusual activity that's going on in the network. So customers may be looking for high availability. They don't want downtime in, the, in their services. They'll, they'll be looking for um, to protect their customer data and also looking to um, protect their brand and reputation. So, you know, lower the risk. And these are the, these are the key requirements at the architecture. So through this, we have a number of um, outcomes that the architecture addresses to provide around insights and experiences. So providing analytics from the Wi-Fi, providing analytics from, from the core of the network, um, and, uh, and being able to provide those insights into customer behavior or user behavior or unusual behavior on the network talked about this automation piece in terms of automation and orchestration, being able to do IT faster, do rollouts faster, um, you know, thinking of the kind of the thousand site customer who wants to kind of get those um, branches on very quickly and manage those um, thousand branches for, um, effectively. And, uh, and compliance, it's a big deal for some customers. So, you know, um, Sarbanes-Oxley and also PCI, again, through uh, segmentation type solutions. Three kind of key areas um, that, that we're focused on in terms of pre-packaged solutions, as it were, um, that are very kind of services rich. And, um, and things like the um, virtual experience, which is what I talked to you about, which is kind of the, the, the nationwide example with video conferencing, um, things like contact center uh, and call manager and so on. And um, we've got a whole kind of um, portfolio around that. There's the intelligent branch, a big part of the intelligent branch is around enterprise network function virtualization. Dave's going to talk to you a little bit about that, uh, well, he's going to talk quite in detail about that today. And we've got mobile experiences, which is around the, uh, around the mobility portfolio and CMX. We've got the workforce experience around collaboration, meeting rooms, space planning. So Cisco, have, um, we've uh, released a, uh, I think we're about to re release a white paper based on the way in which we've done our property management, uh, consolidation of buildings, monitoring space, and making the collaboration spaces uh, much more effective and the, the use of office space much more effective. Last but not least, and uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about this, is the di digital ceiling framework. So essentially, uh, we're looking at you know, driving convergence of uh, building systems um, with the IP network. Some key areas like um, you know, bringing powering the, the LED lighting um, on the network using power over ethernet, uh, in addition to bringing those automated building systems onto the network. So kind of looking at saving the infrastructure costs um, as well as you know, enabling um, other features which we're gonna, gonna discuss in terms of the, uh, the land switching today as we go through. This is, uh, this is the slide that you'd have probably seen at the, uh, the, the partner launch. This is the architecture. I suggest this is, these are the key principles. These are the tenets um, of the architecture. I kind of like to think of this more of the framework 
and um, the key areas being in terms of virtualization and, and we're talking about the physical and the virtual and, uh, and things about segmentation on the network. We're looking at the automation through things like software-defined controllers and we're also looking at the, the analytics piece, a lot of data in the network that we can use to kind of find the unknowns. Cloud service management, you're going to see kind of more um, over time um, about this um, and as we kind of go into the cloud to kind of look at how we manage um, how we manage our networks, but more importantly, how we provide an orchestration function. I think the, uh, I, I kind of like to um, kind of position this as kind of the, the virtualization as the layer one, the network layer. This is kind of the layer two, which is more the, you know, the automation layer and the insights layer. And this is kind of the layer three where we kind of have all the applications sitting, whether those applications be sat locally on a controller or whether they be sat off in the cloud somewhere. And, uh, and those applications are all about taking service intent from the business and basically being able to provide tools into the business, whether that be directly into the business or whether that be into IT, to provide much more effective management of network functions. So the last slide, to be fair, is quite a architecture slide. There is a paper that I really suggest you all, um, that you all read. Um, we'll be putting details up about it later on. It kind of talks about the vision of DNA. And, um, and in there is a kind of a much more kind of detailed kind of approach to this. So when we talk about virtualization, we're talking about IP fabrics. Uh, you know, we're talking about, you know, switches, routers, access points. We're talking about having, you know, physical and virtual devices. Um, we're talking about, um, you know, actual uh, operating systems. So, um, you know, the, the, the new, um, the new IOS um, XE. Which we'll go into details later about. And, you know, this uh, DNA layer two, we're talking about the automation and we're talking about this layer kind of bringing out all the intelligence in the networks, all the counters, um, all the net flow, all the stuff that's out there, but we ne haven't necessarily kind of got it in one place. We're looking at this kind of layer two to be kind of the place for the aggregation of that data and presenting that data in a structured way to be consumed at a higher level to be of use to the business. And then we're kind of looking at this layer, as I said, I think the key thing about this, this layer is the applications and the ability to kind of provide a level of orchestration. So basically able to kind of translate business policy um, into, into the, you know, more into the network policy, but abstract that level of complexity at this level, basically allowing you to sort of influence through intent up here. So we'll have network-based applications, but we'll have digital applications. And digital applications may interface with network applications, or they have the potential to interface with the network directly. We'll be coming on to that a, a bit later on when um, this afternoon Alan's going to be talking about the, the controller, some applications, and also device programmability as well, things like NetConf and Yang. And key to the architecture is that it's open. Uh, so we've got open APIs. Um, it's programmable, and also there are going to be components that are cloud, deliver, uh, cloud delivered as well. And also the, the other point for mentioning cloud is that the idea being that um, cloud, whether a, con a, a service is consumed locally or across the cloud, that it kind of doesn't actually matter. It kind of becomes, you know, invisible to the user and the experience is the same. So, you know, basically ensuring that security, that encrypted tunnel across to the cloud application or that cloud environment, ensuring that there's a quality of service and a service level agreement aligned to that. So a bit more kind of the stuff that you're used to kind of seeing. What does the DNA, the vision cover? So bear in mind, this is the vision. Well, the usual sort of components. So we've got the wide area network. Um, we're going to talk about the wide area network and IWAN and, and the, the overlays that we, we've got. And um, we're going to talk about the campus network. And, and talk about some of the, uh, the overlay technologies and also some of the key segmentation technologies. Now, the data center isn't part of the enterprise networking, but the point of mentioning it here is that the vision is really that we end up with kind of an enterprise fabric where we're influencing, the, uh, where we're controlling um, the infrastructure via an automated means, whether that be one controller or a number of controllers. So at the moment, you know, the, um, the data center, we have the APIC. In the enterprise networking space, we have the APIC-EM. 
So I guess you know the utopia in the future may be to have one controller, maybe to have many controllers. At the moment, it's it's two controllers, and um, the whole point of this is that that really we want to be in a place where these things are invisible to the consumers of this technology, and the whole point is that we're kind of influencing the architecture through through the applications and through the orchestration, so it kind of becomes um, much more tuned to the business rather than having to align the business to the network. So the idea is that kind of things like you know TrustSec where we kind of start and you know ISE where we start to look at policy-based configuration, uh, group-based policy kind of configuration that you're used to seeing in the ACI data center architecture is something that we kind of see end to end in terms of providing any to any connectivity across the network and that those policies are implemented across the WAN, the LAN, also the data center and into the cloud so that it kind of essentially becomes um, transparent um, you know, to the end user. So key component we're going to talk about today about is, uh, is NFVs. So there are going to be um, NFVs across the WAN um, and the LAN. So thinking about this, um, the utopia is, is that we get to a place where, I don't know, there may be an issue on the, on the network. We decide through some kind of telemetry, some kind of um, analytics that are fed back to us that there may be a security issue across the network and it's brought to our attention that it's kind of maybe over in this location in the campus um, and that actually we want to kind of just drag and drop an IPS um, into that component of the network and that it literally is a case of going into a GUI and dra dragging and dropping an IPS into that part of the network for the space of you know, a short period of time during that day to kind of troubleshoot a problem. So this is kind of the utopia. This is kind of what, what the vision is um, so that we can kind of have um, fluid kind of services that can be applied um, on and off in a very, very kind of fluid way. I mean, key things to say about the architecture is that it's essentially Cisco's blueprint um, and it's a vision. Some things are here today, some things are imminent and some things are a way off where I talked about, you know, this kind of thing where all the architectures flow together all very nicely. The, the whole point about it is that it's a service driven architecture. It's all based on policy. Think of the, the stuff we see in the data center in terms of like group based policy, where it's very much kind of all based on service intent and kind of the networking is kind of uh, the detail um, is kind of abstracted away. So it's, it's automated. It's flexible and we're using fabrics in the network to provide that scalability. And as we kind of talk through some of that, uh, some of those technologies today in the campus, I think that'll become quite clear about how scalable, uh, the, the scalability of the technology uh, in order to, to support some of the key technology we're talking about. Um, one of the key things is, you know, open APIs, the ability to integrate with third parties. Uh, you know, for example, providing third party network functions, uh, virtual functions across the network. And the idea of the architecture is that it integrates with the cloud seamlessly. That's just kind of the, the overview and intro to, to DNA. Um, Dave's going to come up now and, um, and introduce you to the network function virtualization component of the architecture and uh, very much focused around our, our routing portfolio.